Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Coffee and Headlines, our morning get-together live here on Facebook, uh, where we take a look at headlines from our city, our state, our country. We figure out what's going on, or we try to figure out what's going on in our city, Puerto Vallarta, and we combine all kinds of information and share it and talk about it so that we can have an amazing life here in Puerto Vallarta as a community of English-speaking locals. How's that? Uh, today is Tuesday, July 27, and as always, it is a pleasure to get together with you. If it's the first time that you join us, my name is Paco, and you can let us know that this is your first time visiting by adding the word new to your comment. And if you do that, we'll be so very happy to, oops, we'll be so very happy to, I think I'm seeing things, we'll be so very happy to welcome you. <laughs> And uh, <clears throat> if you have anything important that you wish to discuss during the broadcast, just let us know by adding the letter Q at the beginning of your comment. Today we have all kinds of news, good news, bad news, thought-provoking news. We have some words to take back because we heard some news that turned out to be not completely accurate and we replicated them and now we are going to fix that. We have one question from somebody, and uh, the answer to the question seems relevant to more than just one person, so we're going to talk about car inspections today. We're going to talk about all kinds of things, so we might as well get started with the news and take this show on the road, and as always, we'll take a look at your comments in the second half of the broadcast. Well, um, this is starting to sound like a broken record, but it is a good broken record. Response to the vaccination campaign for folks uh, in the ages of 18 to 29 continues to be extremely favorable based on yesterday's attendance at La Lija and at the Naval Hospital here in Puerto Vallarta. The government of Jalisco also began distributing vaccines in nearby municipalities such as Cabo Corrientes, Tomatlán, Talpa de Allende, Mascota, and San Sebastián del Oeste, all thanks to the insistence made by Governor Alfaro with the federal authorities to give priority to vaccinations for the younger population in our state. Good news for everybody. And also, we discovered, we read rather, that um, vaccination for folks 18 plus in Bahia de Banderas, uh, just north of Puerto Vallarta, begins today and will continue until Thursday. That said, Whereas vaccination for the same group here in Puerto Vallarta has been done come, uh, first come, first served at two different locations in Bahia de Banderas, vaccination will take place according to your last name in five different vaccination modules with um, last names beginning with letters A through F going today, letters G to M going tomorrow, and letters N to Z going on Thursday. So if you are living in Bahia de Banderas and you're thinking of getting vaccinated, um, 
it's not necessary that you rush to get there, at least not according to this news item. If I scroll down, there is a handy little chart that'll show you where are the locations that you can have access to in Bahia de Banderas. Uh, I also wanted to let you know, as we announced a couple of days ago, the state of Sinaloa is now the only state in Mexico in the red zone as far as the federal COVID stoplight indicator is concerned. To that effect, and starting on Monday, August 2nd, carrying a vaccination certificate will be mandatory if you wish to have access to public recreational spaces. Again, this is in the city of Mazatlan, not here in Puerto Vallarta, but I did want to bring it up. The restriction was put in place by Mazatlan Mayor Luis Guillermo Benitez Torres, and it is the first, the only rather, the only such restriction in the entire country that we're aware of. We talked about this earlier in the week as the possibility of Mexico getting into um, the business or habit or restriction of expecting you to show this um, vaccination certificate in order to have access to something. And this is the very first time that this has been announced. So we'll keep track of this uh, restriction and hope that this does not become more widespread in different parts of the country. Now, let me switch over to this one. How good is Jalisco's public transportation service? Well, much better than in 2018 when the public approval rate score for our bus system throughout the state was only 5.6. Um, during yesterday's press conference, Governor Alfaro uh, announced that uh, now the score for public transportation in the state is higher. It is up to 7.5. So it's the first time during his administration that we pass the score. And he spent a lot of time uh, talking about enhancements to the public transportation network in our capital city and how new routes and electric buses are both providing enhanced mobility throughout the city and helping alleviate the effects of pollution and global uh, warming. And by the way, Governor Alfaro now seems to be keen on offering weekly press conferences every Monday late morning. This is the second week in a row that we... Um, follow this particular uh, press conference. And during the press conference, Governor Alfaro also unveiled the new transportation website, Mi Transporte, presently providing information for bus routes both in Guadalajara and also in Puerto Vallarta. The Guadalajara routes are enhanced with Google Maps, which show you the nearest bus stop to wherever you happen to be. And both cities show places where you can acquire and recharge your bus card. It's pretty nifty. I took a, a, a nice exploration of the website. And if you click on, on Puerto Vallarta, you very quickly can see what the different um, routes are and when you can purchase uh, the, the pass so that you can get on and off the bus. There are all the routes in Puerto Vallarta clearly explained in case you are taking public transportation. Um, let's see what else. There was a snafu during the, the press conference, actually, when uh, uh, a local reporter asked Jalisco's Transportation Secretary, Diego Monraz Villaseñor, why it, is, why it is that not all buses were being used here in Puerto Vallarta. And the Transportation Secretary answered that all buses were being used. Um, but as we recently discovered and we confirmed yesterday, Unibus PV, which is the company that provides our public transportation, is currently only using 255 buses out of their fleet of 355. So we have 100 buses that are not being used right now. Why is that? Well, Unibus PV Director Luis Alberto Romero stated that there is no single public transportation company in Mexico working at 100% right now as it is not financially feasible and it won't be until school ba goes back in session. Why? Because of all the people that use public transportation during um, uh, the, when, when school is in session. Meanwhile, in an effort to have a tighter registration of all drivers of all taxi platforms such as Uber and Didi and Cabify, 
The state of Jalisco will begin a process through which all drivers will be expected to register their vehicles in order to receive a holographic sticker validating that they are working in accordance to the guidelines of the company that they represent. This is being done to have a clearer understanding of just how many vehicles are out there uh, providing the service and to prevent drivers from providing the service unlawfully. And of course, I am referring to the so-called uh, pirate drivers who just decide to go driving their car and they become, uh, um, you know, taxi drivers, but they're not registered with anyone. They're not paying taxes or having any kind of financial responsibilities. And uh, <clears throat> so there's a lot of transportation related stuff going on in uh, in the state. And um, I'll get to uh, no, Never mind. I'm starting to, to get distracted by your questions. Some of them are really good ones, but uh, we won't get there just yet. Uh, while we're on the topic of transportation, a viewer asked me this question yesterday and says, I think the answer might be useful to more than one person. We're answering it here. The question is, hi, Paco, do you know if this is an empty threat or just another way for the police to get a personal donation? And this refers to a news item saying that Jalisco will begin to uh, go through car verification um, starting on August 1st. And I am happy to answer that it is neither an empty threat nor a case in which um, the police is looking to get bribes. In fact, it is nice to know that the state of Jalisco is heavily invested in providing solutions to avoid the changes brought forth by climate change and, and, and global warming. And uh, one of the ways in which the state of Jalisco is doing this is to ensure that cars that are circulating in our state are in top condition, are properly inspected, and are working such that they are not um, contaminating more than they should. And this is, of course, something that is going to help break down illegal, um, not illegal, but there was a whole group of, um, um, of inspection companies that were monopolizing this. So we also know that all this verification and uh, for vehicles is not going to happen in well in puerto vallarta just yet it is just getting started in the capital city but again this is not an empty threat it is not a way for the police to get a bribe it's simply uh, our state trying to do good for our planet and indeed yesterday's uh press conference with governor alfaro had a lot to do with gorgeous new uh, all electric buses and things like that that are coming to the capital city and in fact the program is so ambitious that he um, mentioned that the pilot program that is being put in place in the city of Guadalajara is going to be taken to some kind of ginormous transportation fair in Oslo or some Scandinavian country I forget the details but the fact is the the governor is very very committed to um, improving transportation as it relates to uh, pollution and contamination um, but as long as we're here, I also want to clarify that Governor Alfaro said something that we repeated. Um, so we're going to take it back because his team was quick to clarify this false statement he made this past July 24 um, during his Saturday press conference regarding the return to classes in our state. Governor Alfaro said that the World Health Organization had reclassified COVID-19 as an endemic inspection, and this is not precise information. The World Health Organization did make a statement in May of last year saying that COVID-19 could become endemic, uh, but this change in definition has not happened just yet. We repeated this statement at least twice here at Coffee and Headlines, and we wish to retract it. We do know that it's here to stay, at least for a while. We do know what the restrictions are in place. We do know what we can do to best counteract uh, what's going on and take personal responsibility for our actions. However, it is not precise to say that uh, COVID-19 is now endemic and we apologize for making that statement and reflecting the statement that our governor made. Now, <clears throat> let us turn over to the weather and then we continue with a couple of curious news. Thank you. 
Well, nothing makes me happier than reporting bad weather than watching everyone freak out like it's the end of the world. That's what our weather says today. It's the end oh. of the world as we know it. Okay, enough of that. It's not the end of the world as we know it just yet. But things are getting toasty again. It's 28 degrees. It feels like 34 right now. Humidity is at 87%. And our temperature in Fahrenheit degrees is 83. The weather forecast as follows. We can expect rain in the evening and overnight today with a high temperature of 32, low temperature of 24. Tomorrow, it'll rain until morning, uh, starting again in the evening with a high temperature of 32, low temperature of 25. And on Thursday, again, it'll rain until morning, starting again in the evening with a high of 31 and a low of 24. Such is the weather. Now, <laughs> good Lord, <clears throat> of all the things that you could steal, well, anyhow, when the going gets tough, the tough goes stealing. I mean, not always, but who on earth would think of going out to steal a church bell? Well, in a Pityal neighborhood, folks near the church were sleeping quietly in the early morning of Monday when they heard a loud clang. And upon leaving their homes to find out what all the fuss was all about, they spotted three individuals dragging this not small, not small church bell down the pavement. The neighbors stopped the perpetrators, but unfortunately, they ran away by the time the police arrived. And as long as we're talking church bells, we should also let you know that Mexico's independence celebration is coming in a month and a half. However, Governor Alfaro has already indicated that all Independence Day parties in the entire state will be canceled and all public plazas will be closed just as last year. It is not clear whether there will be Independence Day celebrations elsewhere in the country, but our governor is, of course, not taking any chances. For that matter, uh, he also informed that Guadalajara's very popular Fiestas de Octubre, or October parties, will also be canceled this year. And as an aside, uh, when Governor Alfaro was asked if there will be further restrictions implemented in Puerto Vallarta due to the current increase in COVID cases, the governor replied that there will be no shutdowns of any kind. However, the state's health board is presently considering capacity modifications for places in which people tend to gather without their face masks, such as bars, and that such modifications will be announced this coming Friday. And our last news item today, before we get into chit-chat mode, has to do with the fact that even though it's only Tuesday, uh, we'd like to remind you that uh, the opening of Puerto Vallarta's new city museum uh, is going to be this Saturday. They open the doors to the public for the first time uh, this coming Saturday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. We, of course, are going to check things out so that we can document the opening and show you the new space here at Coffee and Headlines. But if you are in town, you may want to show up and check it out yourself. Now, let me very quickly rewind all your comments just to see who's in the house who's saying hello uh, <clears throat> and who's joining us this lovely tuesday morning uh oh thank you very much david got some butterfingers already we'll try to get more this weekend and then coordinate getting them to you while i am there thank you so much for increasing my waistline but i love my gut my butterfingers my gutter fingers <laughs> that was a bad Freudian slip. Uh, let's see what else we have. Lots of good mornings as always. Mihal, it's great to hear from you. Uh, Lynn says Taco Tuesday. Unfortunately, we will not have Taco Tuesday today. I am staying a little bit on the cautious side this week, I must confess, but I know that sooner or later I have to leave the house. And when I leave the house, I will leave the house with tacos in mind. And if I happen to find myself near a taco place that we haven't discussed, you know I will be bringing my camera along. My sister joins us this morning, and I always feel good when my own sister is here. Te quiero mucho, hermanita. It's great to see you. Uh, let's see. How's Mexico's medal count at the Olympics? You know, Scott, I must confess I am not following closely and I couldn't answer your question. I see that somebody else said something about about 
doing keeping the scores and i'll be i'll do some research i'll do some research and i'll be happy to report on that tomorrow um let's see what else we have great news regarding the continued turnout at la lija yes i wonder what percentage of those people showing up are actually in the 30s and 40s and maybe finally woke up to smell the coffee and headlines well logan we don't know the percentages but i am just happy that people are responding you know regardless of the age i think it's just wonderful that that people realize that the vaccines help you know that the vaccines are not bulletproof but that you know being vaccinated is is a good thing um uh hugo lopez gatel i forget the exact statistics but i believe he said that in the past wave of the pandemic the chance of dying, the percentage of people that could die from COVID was like 22%. And now with all the people that have been vaccinated, the chance of dying from COVID is only 2%. So we went from 22% to 2%. And that is what the vaccines bring into the equation. You know, the fact that we are getting our vaccinations um, means that our bodies are better prepared to deal with COVID in the case, in the eventuality that we happen to catch uh, COVID-19. Uh, let's see what else we have. I am so happy that some people have a chance to watch the, um, to watch the Olympics. Uh, Quintana Roo, I thank you very much for that, Linda. I was not aware of that. Quintana Roo is also requiring proof of vaccines to get into bars and restaurants. Well, again, it's, um, it's, I, I certainly hope this does not happen in other places. What vaccines are they using now? I think they're using Sinovac right now. Uh, let's see what else we have. Oh, my goodness. Dan is, is retiring. Oh, my goodness. My dear next door neighbor is retiring, which means that you hopefully will get to spend more time here and not have to go back to Canada or I mean, to the United States every, uh, every year. Um, so I hope those are good news for you then. I really, really hope so. Uh, let's see what else we have. Do, 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 do. When is school back in session? The end of August. I believe it's the last day of August. Paco, would you please start sharing information of participants and athletes of Mexico who are participating in the Juegos Olímpicos, por favor? Okay, I will start keeping track of the medals starting tomorrow. Um, let's see what else. Crazy buses are packed and people risk their safety during this pandemic to get to work shoulder to shoulder as our numbers rise. This is true, Jeannie. We've said this before. If you're hoping to take the bus and the bus looks too crowded, you know, don't take the bus. Either leave earlier or make alternate plans or hopefully find a way to circumvent that challenge because you're absolutely right. I would certainly not want to ride a bus that is overflowing with people. Uh, let's see what else we have. <laughs> okay, uh, cue the ba dum bum. Stealing a church bell has a bad ring to it. Well done, Dave. Well done. Let's see what else we have. Do, 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 do. The increasing cases are distressing. Still keeping vigilant. Stay safe. Yes, Lorraine, it is it is something to be thinking about. I am not leaving my house much these days, uh, but sometimes, you know, you have to go out there. You just want to be careful when you do that. Question, with some getting AstraZeneca and now Sinovac, how will second round of jab be administered or will they just mix due to what is available? No, Scott, I don't think anybody's mixing anything. They have chosen to use Sinovac for the younger crowds. Uh, and as far as I know, they are choosing to continue serving AstraZeneca for those of us that are, that are slightly older. It is really interesting to me how in the, in the history of mankind, we never became such so concerned about the brand of a medication or its origin, but of course now we do. And if I can do this quickly, I want to show you this very funny 
illustration that Logan sent me this morning. Uh, I don't even know that I'm going to be able to retrieve it. Let me see if I can, because this was funny. Uh, open image, uh, but I don't want to open it. I want to save it. Let's see if I can save this image. Please talk among yourselves while I try to do this. I have downloaded the image. Ah, there we go. So here we go. I'm going to put this right on top of my face. This is a reference to Harry Potter. Uh, if all goes well, there it is. Remember that scene from Harry Potter's first movie when he's hoping he's going to be set into one house and not the other? And here's poor Harry saying, please, please, Pfizer. I want to get Pfizer. And he ends up getting Cinevac. And that's how silly we get with our, um, with our, our vaccinations. And Scott corrects me and says, slightly older, bless you. Well, of course, I'm saying slightly older, Scott, just ever so slightly. Um, and that's that's what we have for today. This is Coffee and Headlines for Tuesday. And I certainly hope you're going to have a good day today. I am going to have to go out and get some groceries because Luna has no more food left. And, you know, we cannot let Luna go without eating she is of course now switching to sleeping in the shower floor because that's the, the the coolest place in the whole apartment so it is what it is um in canada they're mixing brands if you had az they gave you the option of pfizer moderna as we were shorted with az well luckily this hasn't happened in mexico and hopefully this will not happen in mexico just to keep things simple for ourselves and this is coffee and headlines for today i hope you were inspired amused entertained or enlightened in one way or another if you were please keep us in mind when you're spending money out and about as you know we exist thanks to your uh, generous memberships and um and that's what we have have an awesome day and stay kind happy warm hungry loving and stay in touch and i'll hopefully see you again soon great day 